the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, and that this government, of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. People's Tribune Radio is brought to you by People's Tribune Newspaper, a monthly published in Chicago. Please listen. The struggle for democracy in America intensifies. Cover story, People's Tribune, December 2016, page 3, by the editors. The 2016 presidential election was one of the most divisive in our country's history. This is no surprise given the economic, moral, and political crisis we face, combined with Trump's hate-filled rhetoric. Millions have been made fearful by Trump's election, while millions of others voted for him. The hatred and bigotry spewed by Trump has left undocumented immigrants, especially from Mexico, Muslims, people of color, women, and anyone who loves democracy, living in fear. On a more hopeful note, tens of thousands have demonstrated since the election to reject the politics of hate. Many people blame white racism for Trump's election. Others called it a working-class revolt. Which one is it, race or class? The fact is, it's both. While there is a racist element amongst Trump's supporters, it appears the bulk of his backers accepted Trump's promise to bring jobs back. They believed Trump's masquerade as an outsider, running against the Wall Street elites, personified by Clinton. While exit polls suggest that the majority of Trump voters were white, they also indicate a small percent of his votes came from people of color, who also believed his populist rhetoric. We should also note that the majority of voters did not vote for Trump. More than half of the electorate did not vote at all, and Clinton won the popular vote. This is not to suggest that Clinton could solve our problems, but the elections reflected the economic crisis. People's lives are being wrecked, and they are looking for solutions. Whether they voted for Sanders, Clinton, Trump, Jill Stein, or Gary Johnson, they voted for someone they thought could solve the crisis. In some cases, they voted for what they thought was the lesser of two evils. As the saying goes, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We need to know what the situation is and where we are trying to go in order to know which road to take. The old industrial way of life has been shattered forever. Technology and globalization are eliminating jobs here and worldwide. Millions migrate in search of work. The rising poverty, homelessness, hunger, and lack of health care for millions in America is testimony that the economic system is failing. The crisis can't be solved with an economy controlled by corporations and billionaires. The corporations won't support workers they don't need. At the same time, masses of unemployed people are a threat to the system. The billionaires use racism and every other divisive ideology to pit us against each other. Trump's campaign relied on an openly racist form of fascism rooted in the worst aspects of American history. Both parties are complicit. Both Democrats and Republicans represent the billionaires. Both parties have the same fascist program. Use the government to make the corporations richer. Replace democracy with militarized police. Crack down on those whose labor is no longer needed. And make war to boost the economy. Clinton couldn't bring the jobs back any more than Trump can. Technology is eliminating all jobs. Only Sanders and Stein had any realistic proposals that could help people, and they were effectively silenced. The corporations ultimately dictate government policy, not the president. Still, Trump's election means a more rapid advance of fascism, and we should be on our guard. 
his administration will continue using racism and bigotry to keep pointing the finger away from the real culprit, an economic system that doesn't give a damn about the workers, no matter their color or ethnic group. Our society will either be reorganized around the fascist vision of the billionaire, or it will be a society that serves the needs of the people. The new technology allows us to produce unlimited abundance. If the people controlled the economy, the computer and the robot could be used to provide food, housing, health care, education, and every necessity to everyone. This would be a cooperative society, where the necessities of life are distributed based on need, not money. Our next step toward a new society is to get some unity amongst the people who are being crushed, the dispossessed. They are of every color and nationality, and are already economically united by their common poverty. We have to unite around a program that says that every human being in this country has a right to the necessities of life, and that the government is our government and is obligated to guarantee these things. Our fight for this program can pull our whole society forward and put our country on a path to peace, prosperity, equality, and democracy. Contact the People's Tribune at www.peoplestribune.org or call 1-800-691-6888. The only solution to our problems is a cooperative society where the needs of all the people are met. Subscribe to the People's Tribune and order copies to share with your friends. Donate at peoplestribune.org. We need your support to continue telling the truth. Find PTR, People's Tribune Radio, at iTunes and YouTube, and subscribe. People's Tribune pages are open to you. Tell us your story. Let's discuss the steps we can take now to get to that new society. Find out how people are fighting forward with a vision.